Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous Friday evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is Friday, August 21st, 2020 here in Paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York. And uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza doing what we do <clears throat> every Friday and that's bringing you our ecological meltdown roundup rant where we go over to mongabay.com to see what Rhett Butler and the boys and girls are have to say about the collapse of a planet uh, going on this week but before we check in with Manga Bay. We're going to take a brief stop over here at the Center for Biological Diversity's Pop X newsletter. Each month uh, the Center for Biological Diversity comes out with their uh, overpopulation newsletter starting off. Yeah, so tomorrow is Earth overshoot day will be uh, August 22nd and I do want to remind you again to please listen and with my interview with Earth Overshoots Terry Spar where Terry and I spar a little bit over uh, <clears throat> the effects of the uh, corona panic uh, on our fellow earthlings. We have a little bit of a difference of opinion. This is what uh, the Center for Biological Diversity um, you, you know that last year I think it was August 1st and for the first time ever it is later thank you supposedly if, depending on how you measure it, thanks to the corona panic, it is three weeks later this year. Uh, every year the date has crept earlier and earlier for the past 50 years until this year, but this brief reprieve caused by COVID-19 lockdowns is not cause for celebration. Yes, although the economy and travel has slowed down, and it is this slowdown in travel is one of the biggest reasons our fellow earthlings are heading into the stew pot, which is completely not factored in by Global Footprint Network. Life during the pandemic does not represent the long-term systemic change that will be needed to permanently push back Earth Overshoot Day. That will require leaders to commit to rebuilding a future that prioritizes public health resilience and conservation as Global Footprint notes, quote, true sustainability that allows all to thrive on Earth can only be achieved by design, not disaster. And we uh, pick up with that very quote tomorrow. Uh, so we're looking at one of our fellow Earthlings, sea turtles, that are going uh, into oblivion thanks to too many humans on the planet. What's going on with sea turtles this week? Coastal development, beachfront lighting, and human disturbance are now among the threats, putting all seven leatherback sea turtle populations <clears throat> at high risk of extinction. If nesting habitat destruction and fishing gear entanglement continue, U.S. leatherback sea turtles in the Atlantic will decline by half within 30 years. And every time I read a story about sea turtles, they just don't talk about the sea turtle nesting beaches going underwater in the next 30 years. What is going to happen 
I'm not sure how a sea turtle is going to nest in a Highway A1A. I was just reading on the mainstream media that Miami is now talking about putting a 10-foot tall concrete seawall along the southern Florida coast. I'm sure the sea turtles uh, will enjoy that. So what is today's world population on August 21st? How about 7 billion 805,809,842, eight although one is being born about every six seconds, when Hawaii became the 50th U.S. state on August 21st, 1959, that number was under 3 billion. And here we are today, uh, the New World Order depopulation agenda is not working very well. So uh, I was thrilled to see that uh, on the mainstream media today that you do not see the subject of Corona Panic mentioned in the top 15 stories on this planet. I think this is probably the first time since about February that uh, the corona panic not mentioned on the mainstream media, at least until story number 16. And uh, I'm hoping this is a good sign that the mainstream media is finding something to talk about. Now, three the stories number two, three, and four on the planet are about those wildfires, uh, not just in California, but in 15 <clears throat> western states. Uh, California is screwed, guys. Uh, you do realize that California is gone. It is going up in smoke. Uh, this is, uh, even the mainstream media, plenty of articles, uh, what's going on, the hellscape in California. And don't forget Colorado and 13 other western states, uh, all of them seeing these devastating wildfires. This is the new normal. Uh, so that is part of the reason that corona panic is not mentioned, but uh, good old Manga Bay, and uh, they lead off with how the corona panic is killing our fellow earthlings. Uh, Manga Bay is the one environmental organization that is honest about this. Uh, I, I would like to have a private conversation with Rhett Butler. Uh, what he thinks, so if, if corona panic is good for the planet or not. Here is one of our fellow earthlings you have never heard of that is uh, not doing too well thanks to the corona panic. This is the tamarol, otherwise known as, it's kind of like a dwarf water buffalo. Rangers protecting Philippine, Philippine tamarals go hungry as pandemic bites. Yes, the rangers tasked to protect the critically endangered Philippine tamaral are now facing a different kind of threat, hunger, as budget cuts caused by the corona panic lockdowns bite into their already meager salaries. Uh, the tamarall, also known as the dwarf buffalo, is a critically endangered species found only on one island in the Philippines down to an estimated 480 individuals. Uh, but the tamarall protection program has been chronically underfunded, and now diversion of funds, you know, from of conservation funds to help fight the corona panic has left the rangers unemployed. 
Yes. Even as they continue to do their jobs. There you go. Um, I love this one. This was actually their uh, their title uh, article. So in the mainstream media, they're talking about. I guess it it got up to three hundred and twenty seven of uh, these giant uh, Chinese fishing trawlers. Uh, out there by the Galapagos Islands, uh, just completely obliterating the fish stocks, uh, you know, 600 miles off the coast of South America. And so due to the, all, all the bad press about the unsustainable fishing practices, now about half of the boats have turned off their tracking devices. So there's no way to keep track of them. That is f flat out illegal to do this. These giant warehouse, these, these fish warehouses, uh, just, just wreaking havoc outside of the Galapagos. So while that is going on in the real world, we have this hilarious knee slapper from uh, Manga Bay. China issues new sustainability rules for its notorious fishing fleet. Yes, China has made the first major revisions to regulations governing its distant water fishing fleet in 17 years. So I guess the major revision to the regulations is telling uh, these boats to start cutting off their tracking systems. So there is no way for, uh, you know, these fish huggers to even track them. So I guess this is one of the revisions. Yes, the new rules aim to curb illegal activity. Yes, and increase transparency and improve sustainability in commercial fishing. Yes, as the dominant nation in the global fishing industry, uh, China is ranked worst of any country on the planet for fishing uh, offenses. China could have a huge positive in impact through its new rules if it and forces them. We can start with the 327 uh, trawlers uh, raping and pillaging the Galapagos Islands. Now, I don't understand this one. I guess the diff they're, they're talking about uh, the wildfires back in the Amazon. Just reporting last week that there were 6,800 wildfires burning in July in the Amazon rainforest. And that's in Brazil, so I'm a little confused by this headline. More than 260 major, uh, I don't know what the term of major is, more than 260 major Mostly illegal Amazon fires detected since late May. The Amazon fire season, like the California one, is building momentum with 227 fires covering nearly 128,000 hectares. That's about 300,000 acres reported between May 28th and August 10th. And by today, we're looking at 266, more than 220 of those major of fires occurred in Brazil, where 95% of the Brazilian fires were illegal and in violation of the nation's 120-day ban on fires 
President Jair Bozonero has called the 2020 reports of deforestation and fires, quote, a lie. It is a lie that the Amazon is firing. That is fake news. The Amazon is not burning, according to Bozo Nero. Most Amazon blazes are set by humans, with land grabbers, ranchers, and farmers using fire as a deforestation tool as a means of converting rainforest to pasture and croplands. 14 of the Brazilian major wildfires were within protected areas. Uh, yes, areas long notorious for criminal land grabbing. Whenever you see this BS term, protected area, uh, it, you can look at that and see an area long notorious for criminal land grabbing is another name for protected area in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, okay, what next? Wow, this is my old stomping grounds. Back in 2009, I was down here in Peru uh, talking about the road that is referenced, this new road they were building in, uh, good Lord now, 11 years ago on the edge of Manu, so I guess they have even more roads. Imagine that. New road cutting into Manu Biosphere Reserve in the Peruvian Amazon sparks debate and fears. All right, we'll have to watch this new document, a new documentary film about a road project in the Manu Biosphere Reserve. This is another one of these protected areas. Some people call Manu the, num the single most biodiverse spot on the planet is one of these UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, we have a new road. Yes. Uh, with the road will come new opportunities and problems as the area is already being beset by illegal logging and narco-trafficking and don't forget gold mining and bush meat and all the rest. Some in the community fear the problems will, some of the indigenous people in the community fear the problems will worsen and their culture will erode further, while others say it is the only way for the indigenous community to survive. They've been surviving there for about 30,000 years, new research is showing. They've never had a road there, but without a road, I don't know how they're gonna survive. Just in case you're not aware of this, the Peruvian government has prioritized road building in the area and has just announced that this road will be connected to the road I was talking about 11 years ago, the Interoceanic Highway, which will magnify the problems inside Manu. I can see it. All right. I do not believe it. I agree with Madagascar's environment minister. Yes, uh, your old... Uh, collapsitarian agreeing with Madagascar's environment minister who has now called protected areas a quote failure. That is exactly what protected areas are. They are a flat-out failure. They are a joke. What was that we just learned a couple of stories ago? Protected areas are areas long notorious for land grabbing. 
It is just, uh, you know, give, putting a big hunk of land out there to go grab. All right. So what is he, since they're a failure, what should we do about it? Madagascar's environment minister has criticized the way protected areas are managed in his country, setting the stage for a potential overhaul of the system to make conservation more people-centric. Yes, his stand has flustered some in the conservation community in Madagascar because it could mean reorienting their efforts in one of the planet's most biodiverse countries, which is also extremely poor with high rates of environmental destruction. Yes. Um, there you go. So what do you do? Declare it a failure and just make it more people-centric. All right, what the, okay. Somehow I click, this is his new computer, and we're going from all of this uh, talk about tropical deforestation to an ad for Ikea. Ikea bedroom furniture. Uh, I've mentioned uh, Manga Bay has had stories before about Ikea being one of the big planet eaters. Is Ikea somehow advertising on uh, Manga Bay? I remember the first time I, I ever had a, a friendly chat with Rhett Butler is when Caterpillar Bulldozers was advertising on Manga Bay. This was like 14 years ago. This is how Rhett and I first met is when I was did a rant on uh, Caterpillar Bulldozers uh, advertising on Manga Bay and now we have Ikea. Alright. Now this next story is coming out of uh, Australia but it's true for this country and anywhere else. Uh, this is, although it doesn't mention Corona panic in, in this little, uh, you know, what, what I read here are just the, the little cliff notes of the stories, but this is what it's implying. Uh, with its mining boom past, Australia deals with the job of cleaning up a slowdown in Australia's uh, mining boom which has certainly been uh, exacerbated by the corona panic, which is a good thing, is what Terry Spar talks about. That this is good news for the planet, that uh, the corona panic has certainly slowed down mining as demand for all of this planet-eating crap, but here's what's going on. What happens? A slowdown in Australia's mining boom, and as I say, anywhere else on the planet, has left companies and communities grappling with what to do about the closed or abandoned mining sites. Australian law, kind of like U.S. law, requires mining companies to pay for and carry out the re rehabilitation of their former sites but the process is an internal one. Yes, do you think so? Environmental problems abound um, with the failure to properly restore the topsoil resulting in the restoration of land that is effectively sterile. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, um, guys, I'm just moving along. I'm probably, I realize I'm already talking to myself. Uh, what is Harvard University? Uh, Harvard's half billion land stake in Brazil is marred by conflict and abuses. Do you think so? 
uh, Harvard University bankrolling land grabbers is what they're talking about. Uh, you will not believe this, guys. This is why I love Manga Bay. I never would have realized this if Rhett Butler did not explain this to me. Agrochemicals and industrial waste threaten Argentina's Gran Chaco. Yes, farmers in Argentina are using increasing amounts of herbicides and other agrochemicals to boost their crop yields. Yes, the unregulated use of agrochemicals has had devastating ecological effects, namely the contamination of water sources. The Grand Chaco's waterways are also under pressure from industrial pollution, heavy metals, oil spills, and arsenic. Okay, I have no idea what CIMB stands for. Oh, it's uh, Malaysia's second largest bank and a major lender to regional palm plantation companies. Okay. And Mangabe is asking the question, is Malaysia's central bank serious about addressing deforestation? Hmm. Let's all think about, is Malaysia's second largest bank serious about addressing deforestation as it hands out probably billions of dollars to destroy rainforest to turn into palm oil so we can all enjoy our Oreos? I'm going to have to sleep on that question, come up with an answer. What is the latest story with this uh, hydroelectric dam on the world's most imperiled orangutans on the planet? You will not believe this. Indonesian dam builder refuses new study to assess its impact on orangutans. Huh. A dam developer in Indonesia has rebuffed calls for an independent study to assess the impact of its project on the critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan, now numbering fewer than 800. Yeah, found only in the same forest, which is the site of a hydropower project that conservationists say threatens the very survival of the great ape. So the environmental impact statement was funded by the developers. There you go. Okay, I guess we have several stories about the lost forests of the Gran Chaco. Yes, data from Argentina's Environment Ministry shows that Argentina's section of the Gran Chaco, a forest in South America that is about twice the size of California, has lost around 5 million hectares, otherwise known as a little over 12 million acres of native forest in the past two decades. Yes, uh, you will not believe that uh, these government people have allowed the constant expansion of the agricultural and livestock frontier into the Chaco. These incursions impact biodiversity, poverty, and the frequency of droughts and floods. Okay, so uh, we were just talking about the orangutan. So now we're uh, going to look in with an interview with uh, someone. I don't know what Sancho's 
Fit is doing here. Yes, are you having nervous leg? Have I put you to sleep? What are you dreaming about? Are you dreaming about froggies or what? Anyway. Okay. So what is going on with the orangutan project's fight to save the orangutans? Quote, we are losing. We are losing. There you go. There, that sums it up. Now, I don't know when International Orangutan Day is. I think it might have been the day before yesterday. Yes, International Orangutan Day went right under my radar. Uh, we are losing. All three species of orangutans are now one step away from extinction. Deforestation is the biggest threat the primates face, and at the moment, most conservation efforts have only been able to slow forest loss. I don't see any sign of that. Not turn the tide around. Oil palm plantations replacing primary rainforest is a major problem in Malaysia and Indonesia. Yes, do you think so? Okay, you will not believe this, that in Brazil and everywhere else on the planet, human action hmm, and climate change are drowning a community. Yes, um, this is looking at the seaside resort of Atafona on the coast of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, anyway, I'm just talking about it. All right. Can't get into that. Uh, you will not believe that Areas planted with trees, planted with trees, store less carbon than untouched lands. Huh. Who would have thought? Uh, here is another story about the Gran Chaco in Argentina. Wow. With This is the Corona Panic. Uh, connection to the Grand Chaco Forest uh, as Earth Overshoot Day, thanks to the Corona Panic, has been set back three weeks. Not so fast in Argentina, where a movement to save the Chaco Forest hits the Corona Panic wall. Yes, civil society groups civil society groups calling for better protection of the Chaco, the largest forest ecosystem in South America after the Amazon, say their efforts have been set back by the Corona Panic lockdown measures. Yes. In the first six months of this year, Reports show that deforestation in Argentina, just like in Brazil and probably every other country on this planet since the Corona panic uh, hit in all of these economic lockdowns in Argentina, like everywhere else that I have found on this planet, reports show that deforestation in Argentina has increased in the first six months of this year compared to last year. Yes, and that most of the deforestation occurred in the Chaco. Hmm, activists say a major obstacle is the lack of funding for enforcement of the forestry law. 
Yep, whereas more and more of this, you know, as I, as, as Rhett Butler and I uh, talk to our blue in the face, talking to ourselves because nobody wants to listen to this, uh, how the corona panic has completely gutted environmental protection laws, that uh, this is the single biggest boon to planet eaters that has ever come down the pike. Uh, I, I, you know, with all due respect to Terry Spar and anybody else claiming that Corona panic is good for this planet, I'm just going to be the the punching bag of the doomosphere. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. Derek Jensen, it's bullshit. Terry Spar, it's bullshit. Anyway, I realize I am the only person in the Doomosphere either with the lack of brains or the balls to sit out here and call a spade a spade. All right, now that I've lost another, I haven't, that didn't lose me that many subscribers because I realize I'm talking uh, to myself anyway. We've already mentioned this one. This is just an update. Uh, Indonesia pushes rice project despite environmental red flags. Planning will begin as soon as this October on a project that will eventually cover nearly one million hectares, otherwise known as two and a half million acres of peatland in Indonesian Borneo. Yes, experts have criticized the project, citing the spectacular failure of the last time. The, an identical mega rice project cleared and eventually abandoned vast swaths of peatlands, paving the way for fires nearly every year since. Yes, but President Joko Widodo, I absolutely love that name, Joko Widodo, uh, says the project is of strategic national importance. Yes, but questions remain over the sustainable, over the suitability of growing rice and nutrient-poor peat soils exacerbating the risk of fire by clearing more peatland and destroying forests that are home to critically endangered orangutans. Uh, anyway, so what is the latest tally on these Australian bushfires from last year. Uh, a new paper suggests that last year's Australian bushfires impacted critical habitats of more than 800 native species with 70 species losing more than 30 percent of their natural range. The bushfires may have led to a 14 percent increase in the number of threatened species in Australia. Okay, what is going on with this horseshit Forest Stewardship Council FSC slammed for slow probe into deforestation by firms linked to Indonesia's richest man. Do you think so? An environmental NGO that flagged deforestation by two pulpwood companies linked to a forest stewardship council member says the group has dragged its feet on carrying out an investigation. Yes, do you think so? Uh, would you believe 